Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 73 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Uh, last episode, I did a little work on this arcane tower that I've got going on for blood magic. Uh, you can see that uh, we did some automation, so it's still uh, slowly accumulating demonic slates. Of course, these guys require a huge amount of LP per crafting process, but it's all fully automated and I'm pretty much not having to touch anything. Which is kind of the way I like it. I like my games where I don't have to actually play it. So, today's episode, we're going to continue uh, building up this arcane tower that we've got. Finally getting around to the point where we're going to kind of, hopefully, probably finish it off. So what I'm thinking is, up here, where I've got uh, this open area currently, I've kind of planned for some automation stuff around Blood Magic. So what I'd like to have is something along the lines of, like, all the um, crafting processes that Blood Magic has, like potions and all that stuff, I'd like to have it automated as best as I can. Um, so we're gonna start working on that a little bit today. I'd also like to look into a tier five altar, but like I said, that does require uh, killing just a few withers because I think we need four beacons. We're also gonna need a healthy number of runes of sacrifice here, probably is what I'm thinking. So just out of curiosity, rune of sacrifice needs reinforced slates. So let's do this. Uh, I'm gonna change this guy so that we get a full stack of reinforced slates. So we'll say reinforced slate. I want 64 of you guys because these are the ones that we typically use the most. And we're gonna do this as well, 64. And then that should be cool. So uh, what we should start having now is more reinforced slates start crafting until we get 64 of them in total. And that'll be good. So. I'm going to start getting ready. Um, I haven't entirely decided what I want to do with the ceiling upstairs. I'm, I'm thinking like a traditional like magic tower with like the like a cone shaped top or something like that. But I haven't entirely decided. So I'll be back in a few minutes once I figure it out. Um, maybe if I had that building guy. Do we have something that has a, a cone type shape or something like that? Would be neat. This is probably not the exact center of the room, but I just want to check something out. I don't know if there's a cone shape. I'm pretty sure there isn't, but we can check. Um, so, cylinder mode, am I crazy or am I not seeing anything? Interesting. I wonder if there's something weird with the building guide. Oh well, I'll be back in a minute. I'm gonna figure out how to make a cone. So guys, it's time to do a little bit of magic. Unfortunately, this wand focus of warding, which I just decided to make, does require a nether star. Uh, but luckily it doesn't require much else that's very hard to make. So what's the wand focus of warding do? Well, you've probably seen in past series where I've used the wand focus of warding to make a very efficient weather killing device. And that's pretty much what we're gonna do this episode. Um, but I'm gonna do it differently than in the past. I do wanna have a situation where I can um, hopefully do, uh, you know, a simple way to spawn a wither automatically, because I always like having automated wither spawning. That's fun. Um, let's do a quick refresh on this monitor here and hit the refill all button here, because I would like to make sure that all my stuff upstairs is as full as possible. Hooray! That is just cool, in my opinion, to watch. Um, so that should fill everything up for the most part. Um, we'll come back in a little bit here. What I do need to do is definitely head over to uh, see what I have by way of wither skeleton skulls. Do I have enough? I do not. So let's get um, the dire capitator. Where is it? Uh, where is that giant sword? What did I call it? Oh, it's a cleaver, right? That's probably, hmm. I must have dire cleaver around here somewhere. I'll find it. I'm gonna head to uh, the nether, get myself some wither skeleton skulls and then come on back and we'll have some fun getting ready to kill a wither. And then who knows what else? Probably build a wither spawner? Yeah, I think that sounds cool. All right, guys. So I went down into the nether, hunted for a couple wither skeletons, got tired of looking for them, came back, grabbed a safari net, and now we're going to make a wither skeleton spawner because I, frankly, just got tired of hunting down the rare wither skeleton. So... Let's start off by making an MFR mob spawner. Um, so hopefully I've got most of the stuff that I need for this. And we'll probably want a machine block. Oh good, we have one of them. So 
What else was I missing for a mob spawner? Just one of them. Sweet. And away we go. So you can see I've already planned out a new room for this to be uh, put in. So I did that off camera for you guys. And we are going to set this up real quick, probably right now. So the mob spawner is going to need the following. So, so far it's got energy, probably just because I was holding it in my hand while I was walking around. Uh, we're going to need to run some power lines and some liquid in there. I'm going to run that off camera because you guys have seen me make enough of these that I'm probably just going to, for the most part, work this off camera. So I'll be back in just a minute. Let's see. We're definitely going to want, I think it's those that I'm using. And we'll want some pressurized fluid conduits while we're at it too. And I'll be back in a minute. All right, guys, so uh, let's see here. Conduit facades covering up everything. That looks pretty sharp. So we should now be able to, you can see it's running in idle mode. Um, we don't have a, the spawn thing in there yet, but if I were to snag out of here a lever, and you can hear everything running on the side there because we've got, uh, we, we use some of the liquid, right, to fill up this thing. So currently we're automatically running that thing. Cool. With the lever switched on, idle is stuck. With the lever switched off, machine can run. Perfect. So that thing's all set up. Let me get a little bit of dark glass for the front. I guess it doesn't really need to be dark glass. I would like it to be the walkthrough kind though. So I'll get, uh, I'll get another bunch of ineffable glass. All right, let's give this thing a try. Uh, now I will be automating this. I haven't decided if I want to do that right now or if I want to get my nether star and get started on the, the, the nether star thing, but I should be able to flip the lever. Um, we'll put the safari net in there. This has a wither skeleton inside. The only thing to note is that you need to set spawn exact copy to yes. Remember I told you spawn exact copy will do things like make sure the same kind of wool is on the sheep if you were spawning sheep. Same for wither skeletons. Um, it's a special kind of skeleton. Um, so that's why we want to spawn the exact copy. It's the exact same kind of skeleton, AKA a wither skeleton. So this thing is now working uh, and he should work his way towards spawning some stuff for us. Cool, energy's flowing in. That's good. Let's see what happens. Wow, it's taking a long time to spawn them, but that's okay. We should get nice. It does take longer because it's on spawn exact copy, but no worries. I got my first wither skeleton skull. Um, do I want to automate this right now? Probably. Maybe I'll fight the wither and we'll automate this either a little bit later or I don't know when exactly. But yeah, it's definitely using more power, a lot more power, and probably a lot more liquid essence to do the spawn exact copy thing. You can see that my uh, liquid essence generator automatically turned on, which is pretty much exactly what I wanted to see. And I'll be back in a few minutes once I've gotten three wither skeleton skulls. All right, guys, let's get ready to fight a wither. As you can see, I've kind of flown a bit of a ways away from my main base because I wanted to make sure that uh, we didn't have any problems with, you know, the destruction of terrain and whatnot. Here comes a wither fight. So, sure. Let's take him down. Come here, Wither. Let's go. You are a little bit faster than I ever. But no worries. I got gotcha. you. Nether Star complete. Let's go make ourselves a Wand of Warding. Oh, now that's a beautiful thing to see. 64 of every aspect in the jars. All right, so what do we have to do? I know the uh, center block has to be the nether star. Let's get out our Thumbonomicon and see what else is involved in here. So I need two order, two earth, two quicksilver, two nether quartz. Okay, two order. And remember to get a few extras, so I'll get four of each. Just because, you know, why not? Uh, nether quartz and quicksilver. There we go, so two of each of these go around the platform. We can just remove that thing there. So one, two, one, two, one, two, and one, two. Do it, do it, nice.
All right, we didn't really have much problem with instability, at least so far, and it looks like we're about to get our wand focus of warding. Nice. So I can put this stuff away, and we've got it. Beautiful. Uh, so let's equip it and then unequip it. It's gonna hang out in my focus pouch. So the wand focus of warding is cool. What does it do? It allows you to ward blocks simply by right-clicking them. Once a block has been warded, as you can see here, it is indestructible. You can't mine it, you can't break it. There's no way to destroy this block, uh, short of like, you know, an admin in creative mode or something like that, uh, including wither explosions. They can't destroy or harm these blocks in any way. Simply right-click with the wand focus to remove it, and you're in good shape. You can break it once again. Nice. So we're going to use this to build a witherproof room. Um, let's get to work. Now there's a couple other things I'm going to want to have going on here as well. Uh, one of the components that I believe I'm going to need, if we look in here for wither, you'll notice there's actually a block that specifically mentions itself as being witherproof, and that's reinforced obsidian. So I want to use a combination of the warded focus and some reinforced obsidian because there's going to be some parts of this build that I'm not going to be able to do um, using or using the warded blocks because I want to automate the creation of a wither. And in order to do that, we're going to need to place blocks down. Now in the past, I've done this with uh, the MFFS mod, but we don't have that in this version of the series. So we're going to have to get a little creative as to how we're going to make this happen. Now, just so you know, to get a reinforced obsidian block, you need obsidian and you need dark iron bars, which require dark steel, which is made by combining iron, coal dust, and obsidian. So I'm going to get at least a large amount of this. So let's get coal dust. How am I for obsidian? We're pretty good on obsidian and iron, obviously, we should have a ton of. So I'm going to start chewing that stuff up in here. And I'm going to make the wither resistant blocks. Just a few of them, and then we'll be back when we're ready to do some other cool parts of this build. All right, guys, I think I've got the room set up, but I do want to try upgrading uh, the wand focus of warding and see what kind of upgrades are available on it. So let's go ahead and drop it into our focal manipulator here. So wand focus warding. Let's check out the first one. I guess frugal reduces the V cost. Well, I guess that's pretty straightforward. I don't have much of an option there, do I? So I guess Frugal is really the main one you can put on it. I'm just interested to see if there's one of those ones that allows me to upgrade. Ah, Architect. Um, cool. You can use G to change the... Okay, awesome. That's what I want. Definitely Architect. So I'll come back after this is done um, infusing this wand focus with more power. All right, looks like we're almost there. Wand focus warding. Here we go. Nice. Uh, we can... Oh, increases the radius. That's cool. I'll check that out in a bit, but for now, I just want to try it so I can do... Oh, nice. That's cool. So I can ward things in giant blocks at a time. Yes, please. So here's where I mapped out to place this thing. I wanted to keep it kind of far away from my house, um, just in case. Um, so let's see. Neat. I guess it's not going to show me. So let's make it like a 5x5. Five five. That should... Interesting. I'm not able to do the ineffable glass. Since when can't I ward that? Well, that's different. I've not seen that issue before. Not that that's a big deal, but... Oh, neat. I can actually do the whole thing. That's kind of neat. Nice. Interesting. All right, let me play with this just a little bit and we'll come right back. All right, guys, so I've got what I'm calling the Wither Entrapment Room. This should be a pretty nice room to keep this thing trapped. I wanted to have like clear glass in here, but unfortunately it looks like in the newer versions of Thongcraft you can't uh, ward clear glass, so that's unfortunate. So let's go ahead and test. I just killed a few Wither Skeletons. All right, guys, so I've got a weather entrapment room all set. So this thing's pretty well warded, as you can see. And uh, my plan right now is to test it. So I'm going to place the wither spawning blocks right here. And hopefully this will keep the weather trapped inside this room. I wanted to have the clear glass, but unfortunately it looks like I can't put um, the warding on the clear glass. So we're just going to have to go with this method. So let's see how we do. 
not terrible. All right, so it did break a couple blocks outside. We might want to ward the front of this thing to prevent the grass blocks from blocking, but that's just a cosmetic issue. Uh, the wither cannot escape, and he really can't do much damage to anybody, especially me, which is you know, the main purpose of this fight. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Nether stars for days. So, what am I going to do next? Well, let's take a look. I would like to, I think, go ahead and probably ward up some of this area. So let's see. I'm going to expand it out here. Expand it out here. And we'll be good. So make no mistake when I tell you that reinforced obsidian is really a nuisance to make in a large quantity because you just need tons of this dark steel. Um, you need four dark iron bars, so that's like one dark steel basically, I think roughly, and you need uh, some more dark steel, and that gives you just one reinforced, but I think 12 might be enough? We're going to find out. So one of the things we're going to need to do is place soul sand and weather skeleton skulls in the pattern uh, that we just had set up. So, you know, one, two, three, you know, like that, right? And then skulls on top. Cool. So we're going to want to go ahead and mess with a way to do that. So let's first change this up. So, right, so we needed one, two, three. So it definitely needs to be three tall and three wide. Uh, is this stuff here warded? Let's just do this. We'll make it one by one. So we'll unward these blocks here. And down here, what I'd like to have are some drawbridges. Cool. And in each drawbridge will be four of these things and I better I'll dig down under here how's that sound let's see what we have by way of red alloy wire or something probably use redstone conduit that should be pretty straightforward and a lever So as a temporary solution to this, we're going to, and of course this is temporary, right, but one, two, three, and that direction is north, so we better tell this guy that they've got, there we go, north, in, out. Technically I could probably just have this one be a strong signal and these guys wouldn't even be necessary. But let's see if I'm right about that. Nice. See? So this is a witherproof block, and these guys are all witherproof blocks. So we should be protected in terms of the wither causing an explosion here. And I have this being one block deeper, so this is warded, and behind it is another bit of reinforced obsidian. So I think that's the exact amount that I need. So the basic plan is to turn this off, move some autonomous activators in here, and they're going to be on frames. So obviously this can't be here, but, you know, this was all just testing purposes anyway. And we're going to need some, you know, automation around getting these blocks moved into place. But let's go make some frame stuff. All right, guys, let's see if we can come up with a really nice way to design this. So the first thing I'm going to need um, is... Block placers. Uh, block placers are from open blocks, and I chose this for a very specific reason. Autonomous activators require power now, and because this is going to be an extremely compact build, I don't have room to place power cables. So we needed to do this with a non-power using block placer, so that's what this thing. So the block placer, obviously less advanced than the autonomous activator here. So, uh, you know, it doesn't require power, but it's also less advanced, but we don't need something too fancy this will be perfect. I want these block placers to be right here 
at their farthest out position. Then I want them to wind up moving in a couple of blocks. So we're gonna need to, you know, make sure that that's a thing that happens. Uh, next up, we need a way to activate these block lasers. So let's put a few pieces of stone in each one of these. I'll put like five in each just for testing purposes, right? And then you guys can see exactly how this is gonna work. That's weird that this looks different, but I'll find out why in a minute. Block placer. I might have had it like on its side or something. Yeah, that looks better. Cool. All right, so we've got the five block placers, each with stuff in them. So what we want to be able to do is move this in and out. So I'm going to place hollow covers on each of these. And then on the hollow covers, we're going to use framed red alloy wire. This is made with oak wood strips around a red alloy wire. Uh, what this does is it's basically like red alloy wire that acts like um, like the conduits from Ender IO and other things that can just basically be placed in the world without actually having to sit on anything, whereas red alloy wire needs to actually be on another block. Cool. Uh, now, the reason I chose this is because it's micro block compatible, um, where the conduits from Ender IO are not. So I would not be able to use conduits from Ender IO here because they don't support hollow blocks and covers and whatnot. Next up, we're going to want to have some covers, some hollow covers in between each of these. So let's do this and this, this and this, and then we'll want one here and here, here and here, here and here, and then we want one here as well. Not here. Ah, stop breaking things that I don't know what you are. Get the impression I just broke something I didn't want to break. There, there. It can sometimes be tricky to place these things. You have to get it in just the right spot. There, nice. Let's get down one level. That should be good. So now let's put some frame covers on this thing. So we've got one here. We can probably do this, this, and this. And then let's try to do frame sliders. So sheep, you're in the way. I'm sorry. I don't need wool at the moment, but I needed you out of my way. So the next thing to place are the frame sliders. So we'll put one here and here. You go like that. So technically we're gonna want this to be, this is as far as it can go. So if I had like a block here like that, let's do this. We're gonna make sure that these blocks down here can interact with things and then this here and that'll cause it to be like a stopper, right? Um, and you'll see what I mean in a minute if you don't understand what I'm talking about with a stopper. So this and then this. So that should be where I want things to go. I brought a hardened energy cell here just for transmitting power. I should have brought a couple conduits of power, but that's why I've got wireless access to my AE system. And this is somewhat of a temporary design for this thing. We will have um, a little bit more complexity and a little bit more fanciness in just a moment. But this is testing the frame moving part of this build. So one, two, these guys have power now, right? So what we're gonna wanna do is, I swore I brought levers with me. Oh yes, I did, nice, I am good. Cool, so we're going to want to go one, two. Okay, so that block here also needs to be disabled, as does probably this one. Cool. That will be inside the room, right? Now, is this where we want to wind up placing the wither blocks? Yes. And then when we're done, we're going to want to go one, two, and close the door. Cool. And that should protect the wither explosion from affecting the block placers. And you'll notice that now, no matter how many times I flip this lever, it can't move because it's getting jammed up on this piece of stone. Um, did I ever make that thing that lets you see the stuff and whatnot? Yeah, it's probably in the A system. But you know for a fact that that's being blocked there, right? And now um, it can't move forward unless the door is open. So open the door. Allow it to move forward. One two, and it can't go any further than that because there's not enough frame blocks behind it. 
Perfect. I like it. One, two, can't go any further because stone's in the way. Close the door. Nice. So that's what I'm talking about for the frame thing. The next thing I need is some wireless stuff. So let's get ourselves a couple pieces of wireless transmission. So one of you and one of you. One, two, cool. So you can go here and you can go here and sleep through the night. I like being able to sleep while flying. Backpacks are the best. All right, knapsacks, right? Yeah, sleeping bag, okay, that works too. Uh, to connect this thing up, we're going to want the following placed. Um, to get this guy to talk, the wireless transmitter needs to be here and it needs to connect into a piece of red alloy wire. So let's start with 20 as this and we'll go um, wither deploy. Set name, cool. So frequency 20 on the receiving end and then we just need some of this. Now testing, one, two, three. So we flip this guy, open. Will this thing still move and everything be happy? Yes. Now we're going to, we'll do it inside the room for now. So you can see it actually happen when I flip the lever, but clearly this transmitter will be outside the room in a minute. Frequency 20 and a lever. Nice. So when frequency 20 occurs, boom, it placed all the blocks. How cool is that? So that's the next stage of this build. So the plan will be push them in, deploy the blocks using wireless transmitter, and then pull them out. And we've got plenty of time to pull this thing out and close the door before the wither finishes spawning, AKA we have no problem with him exploding before the door is closed, provided I deploy everything and you know control the, the, the wireless signals and whatnot properly. Um, it should be fine. What we could even do is just have like a steady, right? So check this out. When we want to deploy, we turn on this and notice that it keeps moving. And then when we're ready to retract, we don't even have to pulse, right? We just leave it on and then flip that guy. Nice. So that's what I'm talking about. I like it. So that's part of the build. Now the next thing that you guys probably should at this point be questioning, and if you haven't questioned it yet, it's okay, I forgive you. We might have to move a little bit, but we should be able to handle it. Um, I might need to move these a little bit. I don't know the range of the thing I'm about to do, but I need to do something to put items in these block placers, right? We need to keep these block placers filled with wither skeleton skulls and soul sand. And I'm not gonna wanna have to do that manually because that sounds like a nuisance and I don't like doing things manually. I wanna automate it. But how am I in the world going to get items into these blocks? Clearly there's only the front of the block available and I'm not gonna be able to pipe into the front of the block at any point because there's reinforced obsidian in front of it. The sides are available on some of the blocks, but there's definitely one in the middle there that I could not access from any side, except the front and the back. And the back is covered by red alloy wire. So what are we gonna do? Oh no, don't worry, I have a plan. All right guys, so I wrote a quick computer program here, and if I'm right about this, it should work pretty well. So I kinda wanna see it in action. So I'm gonna, let's do this. I need to, yeah. You, you, and you. We're just gonna remove these for a moment. And this one as well. Cool, so we can see this thing kind of moving, right? So let's run the test program. Nice, that's what I wanted to see. And then the door closes, cool. The only thing that didn't work, frequency 20, you are supposed to be on frequency 20. That's why that didn't work. Nice. All right, um, so let's reboot the computer. The first thing I'm gonna have it do is open the door. And then, um, yeah, I should probably do that. Yeah, I'll figure it out. I need to tweak the code a little bit. This was just like a quick demo of how I want things to work. Let's run test again. So that should move in, move in, deploy, move out, move out, and close the door. Awesome. That's exactly what I wanted to see. So let's one, two, three, four. That looks good. Um, so how are we going to fill up the block deployers? How are we going to do several things? 
you're gonna have to wait till next episode i'm sorry i need to do a little bit more programming to make this program work a little bit better what i want to do is have it like when i push a button it executes the code so there's a few bits more of coding that to get to that point but like half the code is there it's real simple it's just doing redstone control and whatnot um but what i'm gonna do is get to work on that code get ready because i am gonna have to visit the end before i can make the components that are going to be used for filling up those block deployers so that's going to be a nuisance but we're gonna have to do it so next episode we'll go visit the end uh, hopefully not disturb the Enderman too much. I'm going to have to make sure I have a way out of the end without killing the dragon, because as much of the Endermen have kind of been keeping an eye on me lately, they haven't really been interfering. So I'm going to just go there. I'm not going to kill anybody. I'm not going to kill any dragons or nothing. They better be okay with me just visiting, and we'll have to see what happens. All right, for now, Daryl 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll be back next time to complete the Wither Spawner, and we'll also automate the Wither Skeleton Farm, and then we can get a Tier 5 altar so that we can make some really cool stuff. All right, guys, take it easy.